These videos are strictly only for entertainment and educational purposes. I do not encourage or endorse to any of the behaviors of the people I am talking about in my videos. On paper, Pauline Parker and Juliet Hume could not have appeared to be more different. Parker, who went by the last name Reaper until the court determined that her parents were not married, had been born in New Zealand. Her father managed a fish shop, and her mother ran a boarding house, according to the Huffington Post. Hume, on the other hand, had been born in England. She was the daughter of the celebrated physicist Dr. Henry Rainsford Hume, who had helped build the first British hydrogen bomb. While Parker was small, bad-tempered, and dark-haired, Hume was tall and attractive, and spoke with an English accent. The girls seemed to come from polar opposite sides, but they quickly bonded when Hume moved to Christchurch, New Zealand with her family. Both had struggled with their health. Parker with a bone condition called osteomyelitis and Hume with tuberculosis, and they became friends while sitting out their physical education classes. But Parker and Hume's friendship soon took a dark turn. Both Pauline Parker and Juliet Hume had vivid imaginations. As they grew closer, they created a fantasy realm called the Fourth World, and invented a religion in which they venerated certain celebrities like Mario Lanza as saints, according to an article that appeared in New Zealand Woman's Weekly. Together, the teens wrote stories set in the Fourth World and dreamed of one day publishing novels. Gradually, they became more and more immersed in their imaginary realm and less tethered to reality. At the same time, the two girls seemed to develop a deep obsession with each other. Though Parker spent a good deal of time at the Hume house, the two girls became withdrawn when apart, and even physically ill. Their families began to worry that they'd developed a lesbian relationship, an accusation later repeated at their murder trial. At the time, homosexuality was considered a sign of mental illness in New Zealand and was treated as a crime. But in 1954, a solution to the girls' obsessive behavior seemed to present itself. Hume's parents decided to get divorced, and announced that Hume would go to South Africa to stay with relatives. The Huffington Post reports that the Humes were open to Parker accompanying their daughter, but Parker felt that her mother, Honora Reaper, would never allow it. So 16-year-old Pauline Parker and 15-year-old Juliet Hume hatched a plan to murder Reaper and make it look like an accident. Why could mother not die? Pauline Parker wrote in her diary, according to the New Zealand Herald. Dozens of people are dying all the time, thousands, so why not mother, and father too? On June 22, 1954, the day Pauline Parker described as the day of the happy event, in her diary, she and Juliet Hume invited Honora Reaper out for a walk. The three of them went to Victoria Park, where they enjoyed afternoon tea, and then set out to wander the park. Then, according to the New Zealand Herald, the girls led Reaper to a pink charm that they'd left on the path. When Reaper bent to pick it up, Parker began to beat her with a brick wrapped around in a stocking. The two girls took turns, eventually hitting Honora more than 20 times. With Reaper dead, the girls ran back to the kiosk where they'd had tea and screamed for help. Covered in blood, they told the kiosk owners that Reaper had fallen and hit her head, but it soon became clear that something far more sinister had happened. A detective later testified that Parker's mother had been attacked with an animal ferocity seldom seen in the most brutal murders, and police found the bloodied brick nearby. Pauline Parker and Juliet Hume were arrested and charged with Honora Reaper's murder. Before long, their trial would captivate New Zealanders across the country. As word of Pauline Parker and Juliet Hume's crime spread, New Zealanders everywhere reacted with shock. The girls were young, the murder they'd perpetrated was brutal, and their trial was packed with sensational claims. The prosecution got their hands on Parker's diary, which contained details about Parker and Hume's plans to kill Parker's mother. New Zealand's Woman Weekly reports that a few days before the murder, Parker had described how thrilled she and Hume were by the plan. Naturally, we feel a trifle nervous, but the pleasure of anticipation is great, Parker wrote. Two days later, she added, We decided to use a rock in a stocking rather than a sandbag. We discussed it. I feel keyed up, as if I were planning a surprise party. Meanwhile, the defense argued that the two girls had been caught up in a folie à deux, or shared delusional disorder, hoping to prove that Parker and Hume had been insane when they killed Honora Reaper. The problem was they had both confessed to it, 
and the only defense we had was insanity. But how could we find the two of them insane? The defense counsel Brian McClellan said, And then this chap, Reginald Medlicott, comes along with this wonderful idea that they could have folie à deux, so we went with that. The trial also featured allegations that Parker and Hume were in a lesbian relationship, something both later denied. Since homosexuality was then illegal in New Zealand, speculation about their sexuality only added to the trial's drama. But in the end, the trial of Pauline Parker and Juliet Hume came to a predictable conclusion. On August 28, 1954, both girls were found guilty of murder. They were sentenced to detention during Her Majesty's pleasure, a sentence for a convicted person under the age of 18 in which they are detained for an indeterminate amount of time, based on the discretion of a judge. They each ended up serving five years in separate prisons. In the decades since their release from prison, Pauline Parker and Juliet Hume both established new and totally separate lives. Though it has been mistakenly reported that they were forbidden from contacting each other, it seems that Parker and Hume naturally drifted apart. Parker, who changed her name to Hilary Nathan, has lived a reclusive life in the United Kingdom. She became devoutly Catholic and has spent her days teaching children to ride horses. Her sister, Wendy, told New Zealand Women's Weekly that Hilary has no contact with the outside world and deeply regrets killing her mother. Juliet Hume, on the other hand, grew up to live out a dream that she and her childhood friend had once envisioned. After the 1994 release of Heavenly Creatures, Peter Jackson's film about the Parker Hume murder, journalists tracked Hume down and shockingly discovered that she had become a best-selling murder mystery writer named Anne Perry. When asked about the crimes of her childhood, Perry said that she doesn't spend much time thinking about what she and Pauline Parker did. I would just torment myself and that wouldn't help anyone, she said, according to the New Zealand Herald. In the end, she said, Honora Reaper was somebody I barely knew. Anne Perry died in April 2023 at the age of 84. But the crime that Pauline Parker and Juliet Hume committed remains infamous in New Zealand and beyond. Not only was their murder of Pauline's mother a heinous act, but it also raised unsettling questions about the dark side of imagination and close friendships. Thank you for watching this video. Please feel free to share your thoughts in the comments down below. Don't forget to like the video and also subscribe for more. See you next time. Bye.